Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and this is a new video. Uh, before we start here, I would just like to talk a little bit about the statistics here on the channel about the uh, last video I uploaded. I uploaded it six and a half hours ago and uh, it's one of the worst uh, viewed videos ever. 18 views in, in the first six, six hours. We can see here it, it's more, it's less than half as many as the uh, second to last uh, on this list and this is more normal like uh, 70 to 100 views for, for a normal video and we can I think we can see a pattern here clickbait meme magic works you know the best screenshot the best command line how to how to then <laughs> and I get it uh, and that's also why I write these stupid titles a little bit so I think it has a lot to do with the title and the title has Thunar inside of it. A lot of people just, oh, I don't use Thunar, blah, blah. And also this number here indicating that it's part of a series. So I think I will stop uh, writing this, uh, what part of the series it, it is. And also that has broken anyways. Now I numbered this 5.5, even though the last I did was 7.1 because I thought this belongs to the fifth sec section. I don't know. It, I think it's just bad ideas uh, piled on top of, of each other. But uh, that video was actually quite cool, uh, good stuff in that. So if you haven't watched it, which you haven't since uh, only 18 people have, uh, I recommend you do so. Uh, another thing, uh, someone told me that I should stop making Thunar videos uh, and start making scripting videos again. The thing is that the Thunar videos are scripting videos. It's actually almost nothing about Thunar. We have created all, all the functionality ourselves. It's not like we sit there and customize the settings inside Thunar. We, we, we just have that as a foundation to build the scripts around. So the Thunar videos are scripting videos. Another thing, Thunar, it's not a good program. It's a bad file manager. It's a bad program, a bad file manager. And in this video later, uh, after I have stop, stopped rambling here, I will show you a new, very, very annoying, bad design decision in, in, in the Thunar design. Um, and it's not good, but whatever, you know, uh, I really recommend if you're watching these videos, if you just watch them, you know, download Thunar, this GTK2 version of Thunar, and follow along in the scripts. The best thing is to, to probably uh, really do it and, and watch the videos and code while you're uh, watching them. Maybe you can even download them, you know. I should probably have them here somewhere. Vid, bud, let's just op open one here. And it's running here. I like to have, have have them like this, you know, when I follow tutorials. I bring them up, bring a video up like this. Then I can follow along long and code while the video is running. I often uh, speed up the speed in M MPV to maybe twice the time, especially on, on like coding videos and stuff. And then I have key binding so I can search in the video without losing focus of Sublime and stuff. It's, it's great. Um, and now I know my, my uh, uh, title here is getting weirded out because I had a previous... Whoops, that image wasn't visible, copyrighted, maybe, maybe not, whatever. So I recommend you do that. Download Thunar, download the videos, follow along, write the scripts yourself, or at least uh, download the scripts from GitHub because they are in the show notes for each video uh, in the Thunar series. and. What happened there? YouTube is really slow. It's like they're adding new features daily and it's uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's weird. But it's 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 cool. But most of the videos, the Thunar videos, have a GitHub link to my uh, GitHub page where you can find exactly the files we were working on in the video. Whatever. And we'll see what clickbait title I have added to this because this video we, the only thing we are going to do, really, uh, to add to our Thunar uh, customization here is uh, the new deed rules, which you don't know about because we added them in the last video. But now we can sort with uh, by time and by size, ascending, descending order. Um, 
and we have added that, that to the to the auto uh, updater, uh, the update FM script. Now we need to parse these in in the launch FM script as well, and that that's a really small thing to do. But I would also like to take some time and refactor and do do some uh, autism magic or what to say on the file to tidy it up. Um, my neighbors uh, are are very annoying. They are constantly out in the staircase uh, and uh, talking with each other. Okay. So, adding those new rules here, that's very easy. Oh, so, so the things we're going to do, we're going to add that so it parses those rules. We are going to refactor the script here uh, a lot. And, uh, and uh, also, we, we, because when we parse these rules, we, we already do this, this xconf query ugly commands here. I would like to write the wrapper function around this uh, xconf qu query. And also take care of this insane, uh, <laughs> insane thing here with with a line that is 300 characters long. And it was why, when I was doing that that I discovered something really crazy with the Thuner uh, program again. So let's start <clears throat> parsing the rules. Now rules uh, doesn't consist of only one uh, character. They consist of three characters. So uh, we need to loop uh, the rule and apply different xconf queries here depending on, on, on uh, the character. So to loop a string, we could do something like this. Let's create a fake rule here. Rule equals uh, lsta or something. Echo rule. And it prints the rule. We can also do echo the variable with a pound symbol like this. Then it prints the number of characters in the string. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, print the substring. Then you add a colon here and then a starting index. And the, the first character is index 0. So if we want to start on S here, then we print uh, 1. And then colon and then the length of the new substring. So if we want to print uh, the whole string here, we could just enter this. Or then it will start at s and, and print the rest of the variable. Or no, no. Uh, there. This is how you do that. But if we wanted to print only two characters, starting with s, we can write that. Suckless <laughs> terminal. Uh, uh, um, so the, these methods is what we need to, to create a to loop a string with a for loop. i is equal to zero while i is less than, or no, we can write i is less than uh, the number of characters in the string rule. Do the loop after the loop body increment i with 1 do echo rule with a subset or substring dollar i colon 1 done there now it uh, did four echoes here 1 2 3 4 and each time the i is incremented. So the first time it's 0, colon 1, 1, colon 1, and so on. And th this is uh, how you can loop a string. At least one way to do it. We borrow that code here and add that now to our place here. Instead of rule here, we add the substring of the rule. Now we can remove these guys and indent that and then done. So now it will loop and apply different xconf query depending on, on the characters in, in the variable rule, which also have different content depending on the directory and so on. 
Okay, so that's one thing here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do and th that I want to do here immediately is to create a wrapper function for this xconf query command because I, yeah, it's such an ugly command in my opinion. Let's just create the function here. xconf query. The command originally looks like this. Even the one here. Uh, and then maybe we should do this channel thunar. Then we have the property, then we have a create, and then we have a type string, and then we have set. Maybe we should add create here instead of like this. Yeah, and this is what we're gonna do in this video. A, a lot of these things, moving function around, trying to make everything look nice and tidy, you know. Uh, so this is the command, xconf query. The only thing that we change, it, it looks the same for every xconf query we do here, except for the property, this part, and the value, this part. And right now, I think all uh, our uh, queries are of the type string but they may be of integer and boolean as well. And, and we will add that to the function here also to, to test the value uh, matching a couple of regex uh, tests and see what type it is. So let's make this uh, function uh, take some arguments. We create a local variables here, one called prop is equal to dollar one one called value is equal to dollar two and one that's called type then we change here the property to prop and we change the value to val uh, there and then we create the test to see what type it is if value regular expression uh, starts with a number between 0 and 9 repeat that number and one or more times and then nothing more if that's the content of value then it's of the type int else if val regular expression uh, starts with um, then we create a group here true or false lowercase dollar so the content of val is either true or false the string true or, or false then it's of the type bool which stands for boolean else the type is uh, string by and then we add the type here as well type and then maybe to make this a little bit more friendly we could move these backslashes a bit I like to do that sometimes could even add one here then we need to add a new line here I don't know uh, the style here when you create, but this is one way. It's okay. Um, and now we have this uh, xcq function. So instead of this command, we could write this as. Uh, oops. Property last view and va value thunar icon view. So I don't know about you, which uh, which one looks best, uh, but I think this is easier to both write, maintain, and read. So we will use that, and then we can replace our uh, icon view command here with that one, and we can replace this one with details view. We can 
tidy this up a little bit more by doing this. Oops. Oops. God damn it. There. There. And we use this our new command here. We can replace all this stuff with XCQ instead. And we can replace all this stuff with a single white space. But here I think I like double quotes around these long variables or, or long strings here. But we'll take care of this also uh, later. And we could also here to make it even more nice, move, align these a bit here. Uh, okay. We're getting somewhere. But right now we are on only test for icon view and list view here. We have added five new rules to our D rules here. It can be T, N, S, A, and D. So we need to test for those as well. Launch FM, uh, A, D, T, S, N. A, D, T, S, N. And to figure out what uh, property and value to set here, we will look into the thunar.xml file located in .config slash thunar. And uh, let's see, sort column and sort order are the ones that uh, contains the, yeah, sort order is either ascending or descending. Column is the sort type, uh, sort column here. It's uh, if we sort by time, name or whatever. And they correspond with the other column uh, options here. So let's go back to launch FM. And paste this here for reference. So we can see ascending, descending. It's this one. Descending, descending, was, was that the one? It looks like that. And ascending looks like this. And the option or the property name is last sort order. The other three that defines the sorting type is called last sort column. And the value is thunar column date modified is for, for the when we sort by time. Uh, S here, that stands for size, and we should find that here in our columns list here. There it is. Size, and then we have name, which we have here. There. Great. Now uh, everything works. And this is basically all the functionality that we add to this script here now could test it really quickly. Let's close Thunar. Um, have a, let's launch it with this. So launch FM without any command line arguments should just launch the, the home directory in list view sorted by name. Launch FM. And it looks like that worked. We have list view and everything. Um, can test git directory sort by uh, size in icon view. Uh, git, it's hard to see if it's really, and it didn't. Ah, that's right. You need to specify the path variable there. And it's hard to see if it is really sorted by uh, size, but if I show the columns, then we can see it's sorted by size. So great, it, it works. Now I want to take the rest of the video here to just clean up and tidy up this script a bit. And also we will, yeah, or let's do that maybe because this is so weird. Let's have a look here. I will show you the strange thing here. It's so, it's so stupid 
can't even I, I can't believe how, how how this works. It's like it's it's complicated to to make it this stupid, you know. Uh, this setting uh, view visible columns. It contains three columns, right? That the three different columns that we have now in Thunar. We have name, date, and size. Nothing weird about that. That's uh, logical. Then there's another uh, setting that contains a list of all the columns, all, all the column names here, uh, even the ones that aren't visible. Uh, and I guess this is uh, because if, if we would add new uh, or uh, toggle the visibility of, of, of a column, then uh, Thunar will know in what order to display that. So, it, so we could have a invisible column uh, at the same uh, index as a visible column here. And so I, I think you get it. it it's not that uh, crazy that it is like this, even if it's really ugly, the, the syntax. But then this is when it gets weird. Then we have the view columns widths here which is just a list of in integers here. And these integers, uh, they are uh, defined the width of each of the columns. So in what order are these uh, integers? One would think that uh, these would match the, the, the column order here, right? So this would be name, this would be date, so on. They don't. They don't. They have a fixed index here. So no matter what your order or visibility or stuff is, this list corresponds to some invisible uh, logic lists somewhere. And I, <laughs> I did some uh, testing the hard way to find out uh, what, uh, which of these are controlling which uh, column. And. Here, here is my refactored version of this script, by the way. But here we have this string. So we paste that here. So the first uh, integer here, that's the date accessed column. It's not like modified. That's the next column that's modified, permission, mime type name comes here just in the randomly in the middle so it's really strange so if, if you want to set the the name column it's yeah you can't it's impossible to know these uh how, how they work and i was like this is really annoying because it would be really nice to to just fine tune sometimes you might notice that hey everything would be so good if if uh, the size column was just three pixels uh wider or something like that and then you could easily just change the size column there it's very difficult to do so if you don't know which the size column is so then you have to manually uh, change the size of it whoops that wasn't supposed to happen change the size of it open xml file close tuner window and watch how these widths values change and then copy paste the whole new width. Uh, yeah, it's so weird. And then sometimes you might actually overwrite one column that you were supposed to, uh, weren't supposed to, and so on. So, so this was something that I, I, I was uh, uh, trying to figure out if there were a, a, a leaner way to configure this. Maybe the worst, most annoying neighbors in the world. Um, okay, okay, okay. So, what I did was uh, I created a, an array that I called columns. Uh, now we can take this list here. Is that here? Do this. So now we have an, a list with the column names or an array with the column names. And then I added uh, 
like uh, the, the width of, of the columns manually like this what, what I wanted and now let's try to add the, the right ones here the important one uh, name is uh, one two three four five from the right one two three four five this is the width of the name column uh, and here it's not important in this columns array here or or it is important because this will uh, define the order of the columns so, so name 235 then we have uh, date modified and that is state that's the second value here 93 and these integer val values here they are actually pixel pixel width of, of the uh, column so so the when you have this set up uh, you could do some advanced things like adjusting the the column width depending on how uh, wide the, the container is and stuff like that but we will never go into that and then last we have size size is a second to last value here then we can just set default values for the rest of them here 59 whatever 69 it doesn't matter there okay now we have our stupid array here with uh, columns and name then I created a loop where I looped all these uh, all these array elements loop no four uh, CA columns added is equal to zero. If CA is less than uh, the number of items in this array, and here we also add this column symbol because when you when you do this on a, on an array like this, columns at then it will this. Uh, hash mark it will print the, the length of the array how many indexes it is uh, and then ca plus plus so it's uh, exactly the same principle as the last uh, for loop here done no do done and this will loop each and each and every one of these uh, uh, array elements. So let's store store them in a temporary variable called C for column here. C is equal to columns uh, with the index of C A. And we have the column, and then the column name here, uh, C N, is equal to C, but with the, the last part of, of, of the string removed. So percentage colon asterisk will remove everything from the colon and onwards. Uh, and then we do one uh, with the width also. And then we change this to pound symbol colon star or pound symbol star colon. That will remove everything from the beginning of the string till the first colon. So CV will only be the width here. Uh, and then what I did was because I I, I created this uh, string for this reason. So I now I have the name that corresponds to one of one of these names here uh, in this array. Then I replace that name in this uh, WS string here with string with the actual width I have specified here. So WS is equal to WS but replace uh, CN with CW. And this will be done on all uh, columns. And it's, it's important to add uh, the width for all of them. If I would pass this string with xconf query and, and some of the values are, are integers and some are strings, then it will uh, freak out. So, so you have to add values to each, each of them. Uh, 
And I also added to this visible columns here because now with this array, then uh, this will be the first. This will be the first uh, uh, column in the visible columns here. Name, and then the second will be date and size and so on. So, so you can change the order by just moving these guys around in in this uh, array here when we are done. Um, but we only do this if um, ca is uh, less than 3, which is uh, the number of columns we want to display. If that is true, then uh, we have a string here that we can call cs for uh, yeah, column string or, or whatever, because this is a ws, so this is cs, is equal to and here the column name, I here I have only written the name, but the name is actually thunar slash column slash and then the actual name. So this is what we need to add here to, to this CS. This and CN and also a comma because we, we have to create the comma separated string like that. And that's what I do in this loop. So if every, everything worked here now, we can test this by doing an echo uh, ws echo uh, cs and see what we get. And then we exit the script because we don't apply any settings or launch any thunars. Um, let's bring this up and see if we have any open thunar windows. We do. Let's close that. Okay, launch FM. There. Now it prints. Here you can see the width list here, uh, which have replaced, added these values at the right position. We can see the name is added here and so on. And we could test this by just changing this to this and maybe this to this. And see. And now we can see they add are added at the right position in that with string because for some reason they thought that was a good idea. And we also have thunar column, thunar, thunar date and size here. So three columns in, in the visible list. And I, I found out that it's no problem at all to, to not include uh, in uh, columns order here. It's okay to just add the, the three visible columns. We don't need to add all of them to, to this this one here. And with this setup, we can replace this list of widths here with WS and these two uh, with CS. But that's not perfect since Every time we add something to CS here, we also append a comma, comma. So we we need to remove the last comma here uh, with just percentage comma, and then that will remove it. And I think this will work. Let's remove the echo and exit there. Just to try this now. Uh, super E. There, it opened Thunar with name, date, size. Okay, if we close this and then we, uh, we could change this also, how many columns. Let's change it to four and then let's set uh, the owner as the second co column or something and see if it works. And there, now we have owner and we have four columns and they all look weird and stuff. So, so this is a makes it really easy to configure this, the order, uh, the, the number of visible. We, we should also add this four here, the number of columns as a variable. Let's keep it like this. This was good. And then we, we add a, a variable called number of columns is equal to 3 and then we change that 4 to the variable number of columns 
Great. Okay. Um, now um, we have done a couple of things here. One is that we have added a bunch of weird, stupid variable names here. But I think sometimes these types of variable names are fine. Because here it would get so cluttered if I have to write the full uh, variable name and stuff. Uh, but the two things we should do is one, make them local. And the second is to maybe comment them uh, for, for future reference, you know, so we know what, what this is all about. You have no idea. When you go back to a script like after a, a month or a year or something and you see things like this, then you just uh, get angry at yourself. Uh, and also I'm thinking these, these guys, these are like settings. These are more like global settings. I would, we, we put them here at the top of the script. Can start with that. That's okay. And, and it will work now. We can modify it here and, and the function will know about these variables also. So that's fine. But first let's create local variables here. Uh, w S C A C C N C W W S C S. I think we covered all of them there. Uh, rule we already have that included. Uh, window ID that's also something we could add as local variable there. Add that before these short ones. Good. Okay, and now the grand refactoring begins here. Uh, let's let's go to the top and see how it looks like. Let's remove these stupid comments here. These are environment variables. But I'm thinking some of these does shouldn't be environment variables. Or this shouldn't be an environment variable. Target container. And same here with target directory. That shouldn't be a, an environment variable. Because these target container and target directory, they are always set within the script. It's nothing we... we uh, if we want to manipulate them, then we change uh, either the default directory or the default container instead. And execute the script without those arguments. or use the command line arguments. So these ones shouldn't be uh, environment variables at all, but they should be global variables. And I like to do this with global variables. Uh, Alt F3, that will select all occurrences of this string in the document. Then I'll write double underscore, and then trgcon. That can be target container. Now we don't need to do this stuff. It's not an environment variable. These are also globals. So Alt F3, double underscore, columns, which maybe is a bad uh, name here when I think about it, but whatever. Ah, oh, God damn it. Yeah, you see already. Maybe we should call it something else. A calls. Array calls. Uh, 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 and then we change that to media. And here's another thing. This script, it's all about launching Thuner. The main function, just just figure out if we should launch a, uh, a program or just focus it. And I wonder if it doesn't make more sense. And now we have these weird functions and then we have this launch uh, Thuner function. I think it makes more sense to move that to the top of the script or af after the global variable definitions. Because this will be uh, the place where you most of the time need to modify stuff and, and, and look for things. What did we say here now? A calls. Let's change this here to 
this number of columns. What happened here? I didn't break anything else there. Okay. This is a global. This is a global. Um, another global that we have is um, here. Target directory. This shouldn't be a global variable or environment variable. It should be a global variable called uh, trgdir for target directory. And we can define that here as well, just to make it clear. Even if that can be blanks, we set it a, a, with a blank argument as the default. Uh, and if it is blank later in the script, it will get assigned the default directory, which is an environment variable. Default container, secondary container, here also, uh, we, we in this test here, we, we see if target container um, is equal, not equal to the secondary container, the B container. If it's not, then we, we get the rules from our parse rule script, script. but if it is, we set a, 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 a rule for the B container. And this could be an environment variable secondary container rule and now let's see what we have lna is the normal default rule we have here and i know i i, I don't think anyone wa is watching this i don't care i don't really care uh, launch fm secondary container rule replace that with this that means we can set the default secondary container rule in in a different script and it doesn't even have to be the same as a default uh, uh, for for our, our d container which may or may not be desirable uh, this stuff here is local variables no need to change that things this is fine Target directory. I thought I sh changed those because those should be called trgd. What was that that I changed them? Okay, let's copy everything. No. Oh. Okay. Probably just never selected everything. TRG TIR. Now we have some problematic quotes. Did you forget to qu close this double quote string? No. There, trgdir is there. Um, another thing is, this class name here is something that we use a lot in, in the main function. This ugly string here, that could be set as a global variable as well. Uh, let's copy that and then let's call this trg class and because that is defined here place for that uh, and 
then we can also add this to our list of global variables at the top here. Also empty by default. Then we should remove all these echoes or change them to comments instead. So here we first test if, if we don't have a path uh, argument to our command. No path argument trying to guess target window. And then we remove this echo here. Uh, and we set container ID to the output of i3 whiz whiz here. If that is empty, then there is no visible window. No visible window found. Then we set the container ID to a i3 get search. If that is empty as well, then no window exists at all. No window in target container exists. And if that is true, then we set target directory to the default uh, uh, directory, which is an environment variable, and execute the launch tuner command and, and create a new create a new tuner window. Spawn new window. Uh, but if uh, we find something with the i3 get here, then a window exists in the target, a tuner window. window exists in target container but is not visible focus it uh, and here but if we have a visible window then we just focus that Found a visible donor window in target container. Focus. Great. And this is only done if we don't pass anything with the P option. If we do pass a path to the P option, then we have a directory and we do different things. So. Uh, directory is passed to p we escape the characters in target directory we don't need to echo anything here and then we set a container id to a search with i3 get and now we search for both both the class and the title uh, and we don't care if it's visible or not if it is visible or if it exists, we focus it. If it doesn't exist, we just launch a new Thunar. We don't really need to comment that. I think this is quite self-explanatory. So that's good. Okay, uh, and then we also have these stupid uh, functions here escape characters it could be written in one line like this i don't know why i didn't do that last time and here we only have one variable this could also be a one line thing if we change this to this and this to this and this to this and then do this and this and this There. And then we have our XCQ function at the bottom. So, so at the bottom, I like to have like just thing, stupid functions like this that are more helpers. And then 
the more frequent you 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 view and and uh, a function whatever you get it and i think it's actually starting to look quite nice here now we got our environment variables our global variables here it's easy now to make uh, uh, set things to to our scripts from by just opening it uh, we got the settings on the first lines now it's things like this left you know just aligning things in a neat way uh, I like to do things like this you know it's nice it's nice comfy uh, here we do something weird also we set target container to be default container in case it isn't launch fm i think we should skip this and so it could set it to other containers as well whatever we pass in as whatever target container is we, we define that in the main function here that's defined here or target container is set to a default to the default container at the beginning of the script but then we can override it with a command line option we don't need to do this thing here so i think we can remove that there um, and here and you see with, with, with this even if they are stupid you know these long environmental variable names but now it's almost unnecessary to comment anything here you can launch you can see here oh so secondary container rule yeah that's a, it's a special rule for the second container you you, you self-explanatory but we could add things like describing what's going on in this loop at all uh, uh, replacing strings in ws with the width of a column whatever and creating uh, order of columns depending on the order of elements in a cos something like that you know so you, you just know and here it can be good to write xcq is a wrapper for xconf query you could even write um, something like drop bow so you know what's going on here and these are uh, default settings for new lunar windows and here we set rule specific settings <laughs> and i don't know if we should do things like this i just like to do it you know but I'm not sure what is how we should write this if this is is the nicest way to write this or if it's this or if it's even this I, I, I don't know I, I'm, I'm, I'm right now I am in the middle of trying different things to write this stuff in long commands with many options but one thing is that I would like them on uh, individual lines but at the same time it's kind of nice when you have one option on the same line like this and then the rest following that one you save a line the other you I don't know let's keep it like this and then I don't know about this either if we should 
align the backslashes or not. Maybe that's just stupid. I, I, I don't know. And, and then we have this, this guy. Should that be here maybe? I guess so. To make it more clear that this is a command block. I don't know. And here we could do the, this then. Set window. And then I, uh, with, with this I don't know if this is the correct way then. I guess so. Here, what, one thing with these backslashes, they, they almost makes it more understandable that these are all belong to one command. And you can even add a backslash to the last option, but then you have to make sure there's a new line after it, a blank line. I don't know, but I don't, I think... Maybe even this on X2 tool. It's kind of special since it's have commands and options. Or add the class first here. I don't know. Like this. Yeah, yeah this is good. I think maybe it's just really ugly. I don't know. Tell me in the comments what you think. All, all of you, <laughs> two people who watch this, I don't know. And here, what's this? Anything. We cannot call anything anything. Uh, option. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see if we're gonna define anything local here. I think we can use container ID could be a local variable in the main function. And then I don't know if we need to set option as local or if, I think so. Otherwise, to, to be really correct here. Container ID and yeah, yeah, no. I think I'm, I'm think, I, I think I'm happy with this. And look at, look at our script here, how professional and good Nice it is, easy to read, uh, easy to edit, easy to, to, to extend. Environment variables in all caps, I don't know. Global variables. And here we could even add some explanation to them. Uh, target container then we have these two target directory target class sure it's almost overkill to write target class target directory when you get, get, got these but I don't know Number of columns, I'm not going to make a comment for that, but maybe the columns array here could be really good to uh, order of this array uh, will correspond with the order of columns in Thuna. Don't remove elements. Uh, last part of each element is the width of the column in pixels. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is nice, this is nice. Um, did I say I use arc, by the way? <laughs> and may or may not be on the autistic side of the spectrum. Great. In the next video, we will add uh, some um, a really 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 good thing we will make so that update fm 
right now we only execute update.fm uh, from the Python script. Uh, so it automatic, automatically sets the layout. But we will add a, a f just two lines to this script that will make it um, uh, possible to execute it from, from the command line or from other commands. So we can update the layout of a currently uh, running or visible Thunar window and stuff. And that means we can create our own special key bindings inside Thunar and it opens a whole bunch of cool uh, uh, dirt hacks that we can perform. And this is a new thing that I haven't been using before but I tried it out uh, yesterday a bit and it worked really really nice. I was really happy with how, how this works and I can't believe I haven't uh, used it before. So that's what we're going to look into and then we will uh, need to also uh, try some uh, of, of Thunar's com custom actions and stuff like that and create our own commands and key bindings. It, it will be good times. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.